I'd like to start off by apologizing for the amount of singing that's about to happen in this video. Hello everyone, Merry Christmas! My name is Kathleen and thank you for watching Pray Like a Girl. If you're interested to find the theology hidden behind regular Disney princess movies, keep watching. Today we're going to talk about Frozen 2 and Elsa's discernment journey through that movie. Yes, discernment. If you haven't seen Frozen 2, here's the general plot synopsis. I wish I could do it like Olaf did, but anyways, basically Anna, Elsa, princess and a queen living in this country, their parents are dead, Elsa keeps hearing all these voices, particularly this one, like that, but like a million times better. She keeps ignoring it, keeps pushing it to the side and moving on, living her life. But she's definitely disconcerted. Nobody else is hearing this voice. And in this song, Into the Unknown, is when she finally acknowledges that she hears this voice. The first line of the song, if I could hear you, but I don't, is kind of her entry into the song. She could hear this voice. It's kind of persistent. It's here in the back of her head and she can hear it and she doesn't want to. So um, we're going to directly link this to prayer. So a lot of times when we're in prayer, we know there's a tugging in our heart, but we very clearly say, I hear you, but no, I don't. I actually don't listen to you. Like I recognize that's God. I recognize that's not coming from me, but I'm going to ignore it. Okay, God, maybe you're speaking to me. Maybe you're talking to me. I don't really want to hear what you have to say, but I'm going to acknowledge that this is kind of weird and I'm hearing your voice. The second thing that she does is immediately explains to God why she can't listen to him. She says, I'm spoken for, I fear. I'm spoken for. God, I, I already have someone watching out for me, taking care of me. I've got this under control. You can kind of move along, go bother someone else. How often do we do that in prayer? I have a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend. I want children. I'm in school. I have a friend's wedding coming up. Like there's a million reasons to be spoken for. I've got other things going on. You can kind of take a back seat right now. It's immediately our reaction a lot of times when God asks something of us. She goes on to further qualify Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. Why would she leave this comfortable, beautiful place with good relationships? A lot of times when we're discerning vocation, that's something that comes up. Good things. Relationship with your family is a good and beautiful thing. Relationship with your friends, with loved ones. But sometimes God is still asking you to step away from things that you love most dearly and that are good things because he is better. At this point in Elsa's discernment, she's saying, my family is the absolute most important thing, but really, who is the most important thing? God is the most important thing. And so that's an invitation to put him first on top. These other things are good and they can be part of our life, but they have to come after God. So the first uh, verse or so, when she's talking to this voice that she's hearing inside her head, Elsa's making a lot of excuses. But the last line before the first chorus, is when she really boils it down and explains exactly what most of us are feeling when God asks us to do something. She says, I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Again, sorry for my singing. Yikes. I'm afraid of what I'm risking when I follow you. I mean, how many times have I said that in prayer? I mean, this really strikes a chord with me. That's when I heard that line of the song is when I realized Elsa's really going through the discernment journey, but she doesn't stop there. That is not the end of the song. She keeps digging deeper and keeps hearing this voice, keeps hearing the spirit and keeps the dialogue up. That's the important thing. You can say in prayer, God, I'm afraid of what I'm risking. But don't stop there. You have to keep going. That's when you're going to start making headway. In the next verse, after she's into the unknown, and you know, all of that. I know deep down I'm not where I'm meant to be. Everything's going well for Elsa. But this voice is disconcerting because she knows she wants to listen to it. That's terrifying because she knows that she's going to have to take this risk. She's going to have to risk everything and follow this voice, follow God into the unknown because there is some innate desire to listen to this voice. Just like there is some innate desire in us to listen to the will of God, to really follow his will, 
even when we don't know what that is. And he points us in the right direction by giving us the discomfort. And then she finally admits, part of me longs to go into the unknown. So first she says she knows she's not where she's supposed to be and she's afraid of what she's risking, but part of her really wants to go. Elsa's not an adventurous person. She'd rather stay at home. I mean, she lived her first, you know, 20 years of her life locked up in this castle. She is taking this big risk, but part of her really longs for that. She wants to know who she truly is and what her purpose is on this earth. Just like we want that. We really desire the truth from God and his direction and his guidance. This is the part of the song where Elsa's transformation really happens. The bridge at the end of the song where she starts asking all of the questions to this voice is like so, 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 so relatable. Are you out there? Do you know me? Can you feel me? Can you show me? Ah, you know. How many times do we ask these sort of things of God? God, are you even there? Do you really know me? Do you really know what I desire? Can you feel me? I have these emotions that you don't understand, God. Can you show me? God, give me a sign. First, she's saying, I can't even hear you. If I hear you, which I don't, at the very beginning of the song, but now she's saying, would you show me? What would I gain? I know what I have to risk, but what is the good if I follow you into the unknown? And so the music builds and she's following these ice spirits out into the wilderness. The, you know, spirit goes away, it flits away into the sky. Where are you going? Don't leave me alone. How can I follow you? She's asking, she's begging to follow. All of a sudden the voice is going away and she she's realizing this is my opportunity. When God is clear in his call, that's our invitation to go, to follow. Even if we don't know how, ask, how can I follow you into the unknown? He's not going anywhere. He's going to be with us every single second of the way. When he offers us in prayer this opportunity to grow closer to him, Let's 100% take advantage of it. Spoiler alert in life, this is what he has planned for us. God is going to make it so beautiful. He's going to bless it and give you beautiful graces for whatever it is that you're doing when you walk with him. We can see that in the movie, in Elsa's second song of this movie, Show Yourself. And she realizes she's no longer trembling. Show yourself, God. I am showing myself to you. This is me. This is all of me. It's all for you. And then the spirit's like, boom, you are like Queen Elsa of the whole land and you are, have your full powers and you're incredible, right? God does that too in our vocation. We have to go to him and empty ourselves completely. It's scary. When Elsa says she's trembling, that's totally fair. It's terrifying. But the farther we walk with Christ, we get to that line. She says she's never felt so certain. Could it be the reason I was born? Does that sound like any saint you know? Maybe Joan? Oh my gosh, she was referenced in Frozen 1. Do we think we've got a Catholic hiding somewhere in the Frozen writing team? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I think so. But the culmination of this song, Show Yourself, is I am found. When we're discerning vocation, I personally feel lost like a lot of the time. But when God is with us and allows us to see and find and live our vocation, we are found. We know where we are. We are found in the love of Christ. And that is the most we can ask for. It is a beautiful song in the movie. It is a beautiful realization of her finding the fullness of her powers and where she came from. We want to know what we were made for. God has a plan for each of us. And when we find our vocation and when we are allowed to live our vocation, that fullness of power that Elsa receives is the same thing that we receive in marriage, in religious life, in a single vocation. Not to say that it's without any problems. Obviously in the movie, there's lots of problems that come up afterwards, but God is with us in every step of the way. And when we follow in our vocation, he is giving us all of the resources we need to really, really work for him and with him towards heaven. And it's just so beautiful and glorious. And the light show in the cavern is not at 
all an accurate representation of the grace of God. But it's a little glimpse into the wonder and beauty that God is and that he has in store for your life and for mine. So even though it's scary and we're risking a lot to follow him, please pray that we can follow God into the unknown because in the unknown, he has something so beautiful planned for each and every single one of us. And I cannot wait to find it. Pray for us. We are praying for you and we will see you next Friday. Merry Christmas.